So welcome back to Mastering Solidity, the video series where I'm giving you a crash course in blockchain development. This is video number three in the series where I'm going to go over a very essential aspect of Ethereum smart contract development. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory from Dapp University, and on this channel, I teach you how to become a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then click the like button down below and click subscribe. And if you want to learn how to become a real world blockchain developer step by step, I've got a free training where I can show you how to do that. All right. Head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. So in this video, we're going to cover two essential features of the Solidity programming language. These are going to be two different data structures. Uh, the first one is going to be an array. And the second one is going to be a mapping. All right, I'm gonna explain what both of these are and how to use them inside this video, okay? So if you haven't already, head on over to remix.ethereum.org uh, to get started. You know, this is just an in-browser uh, IDE that lets you write Ethereum smart contracts directly in your browser without having to install anything on your computer. It's really nice. So um, go ahead and create a new file here. I've got one called mycontract.soul. And inside of here, make sure that you um, add the version of Solidity that we're going to use in this video. So 0.6.0, .0, just like this. And then also go ahead and create a smart contract called my contract like this. All right. So now let's talk about arrays. So what are they? Basically, they're just a way of storing uh, information, basically a list of information uh, in order. So you might be familiar with this from other uh, programming languages, but if you're not, I'll show you what a basic array looks like inside of Solidity. All right. So you can create one like this. Let's go ahead and delete this out. And I'll say uint. All right. And then open curly, sorry, open uh, bracket, close bracket public uint array equals one, two, three. All right, so that's how you create a basic array inside of Solidity. All right, so I'm gonna bump this font up a little bit. So essentially what it is, uh, it's a list of information. In this case, it's just a few numbers, all right? One, two, three. There's three items inside of this array, and they're an order, right? We can access each of these values uh, based on the order uh, that they exist inside the array. We call that the index, which we'll see here in a minute, okay? So basically, um, arrays inside of Solidity have a very specific type inside of them. So in this case, uh, this is an array of unsigned integers. So if you're not familiar with those, go ahead and check out that previous video where I talked about different data types. Basically, this is just an integer that can't be negative. Um, and, you know, we create an array of them like this, right? We call it public so that we can read it outside the smart contract. And then we give it the variable name of this array, which is just uint array, right? Just an array of unsigned integers. We can also create arrays with different types, like strings, for example. Uh, we can do that like this, say string, right? This is a string array, public. And we'll just call it string array. And we can create items inside of it like this. We'll say apple, banana, and carrot. All right. We can also create arrays without any values initially, right? We can basically just say um, string public my array. All right, we don't add any items to the array. We just create it, uh, we initialize it here, all right, inside the smart contract, and then we can add items to it later inside of functions and things like that, all right. So I'll show you how to do that right now. So basically, you can create a new function like this, say function, all right, we'll say um, add value, okay? And we'll pass in a value to this function like this. We'll say string, memory value and whatever we do inside of here we'll add it to this array right here all right we'll say uh public and we'll pass in the value like this uh we'll say values push and then value okay so let me explain what this does uh essentially it just takes this uh values um, actually, sorry, I said my array here, this should be values. Okay, so it takes this um, array that we created right here, values, and then just adds 
uh, the value to it from the function. So we use value with an underscore in front of it here. Uh, that just represents the value that's being passed in. And we add it to this uh, array like this, which is a state variable, right? We store it inside the smart contract, okay? So we do that with the push function, okay? So what push does is it takes uh, one argument, this is the value here, and adds it to the end of the array, okay? So if we had done this to, you know, uint array, it would, you know, or sorry, let's do string array since this is a string. Let's say we passed in, you know, uh, D, let's say like uh, a dog food inside of here, it would add dog food to the end of the list, okay? So that's what push does. It adds an item to the end of the array, okay? So we'll see that in action here in a minute when we actually test this out um, in, the, in the compiler uh, here in a minute, or actually in the runtime environment. So the next thing we'll do is show you how to get uh, the number of items that have been added to this array, okay? So function uh, value count, all right? And I'm gonna say public view, returns, say uint, okay? And inside of here, we'll say return values, all right, this is values right here, dot length, all right? And that will let us know how many values in, exist inside this array, okay? And really quickly, it looks like I have a typo here, say function, <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, so the last thing I wanna show you uh, with arrays are how to do uh, two-dimensional arrays. So what does that mean? Well, you see how, you know, these arrays have, you know, numbers inside of them and these have strings inside of them. Well, you can create an array that has other arrays inside of it. Okay, that's what a two-dimensional array means. So I'll create one like this. So you int, um, it, it basically it'll be a two-dimensional array and then the innermost elements will be numbers, which we'll see here in a second, All right? Like this, say public array, we'll call it 2D, all right, equals, one, two, three, and then four, five, six. Okay, there you go, that's a 2D array. So you can see there's an outer array here and then two inner arrays, which contain one, two, three, four, five, six, and those are unsigned integers. And so you just declare the 2D array like this, okay? All right, so let's watch some of this in action. Go ahead and click on the compiler here. Uh, we'll click compile contract. If you don't have this, you can install it from the plugins down here. Okay, all right. So that worked just fine, no issues. Uh, then let's go to uh, the runtime environment so we can deploy the smart contract like this. All right, click deploy, and there we go. So let's interact with this. Uh, we'll do it one by one here. Let's look for the uh, uint array, all right? So I'll explain what this does. Essentially, this function does not return um, the array. All right, remember whenever we put public, we put the public visibility on state variables, it gives us a function, right? These are the functions right here that it gives us um, for free. We don't have to create a function like this. It does it automatically behind the scenes whenever we call this public, okay? And so um, the function exposed by this variable right here, uint array, doesn't actually return the array itself. It returns a function that um, we can pass indexes or indices into to, to read each item out individually. So I'll just show you what that means. That might sound kind of confusing. Just watch this and I think it'll explain everything, okay? So you enter array, basically I put in zero right here and it will return the, it'll return the number one. All right, see, boom, done. So this is an important thing to note. Um, arrays and Solidity, like most other programming languages, are what's called zero-based index, all right? So if you put in the number zero, it will return the first item. If you put in the number one, all right, it'll return the second item, all right? And then, you know, if you put in two, it'll return the third item. And if I put in a number, uh, an index that doesn't have a value, it will throw an exception. So if I put like, you know, 99, all right, boom, there you go. So the VM error, all right? So you can see that in action also uh, with the string array. All right, if I put in zero, that's the first item in the list. All right, string, boom, done. Okay, and then the next item would be, um, let's see here, one. Okay, all right, and then the next item would be uh, two. 
all right, the next item will be three or else do it. You know, you know what I'm saying? If I put a number, it does the same thing. It'll, it'll just basically return a VM error. Okay. All right. So that's the string array. So look at values. So in order to read items out of there, we can do get value. So we can add a value like this. Uh, so that's going to be a string. We can just say, you know, foo. All right. Click add value. All right. And then we can uh, add another value. We can say bar. And then add another value and say baz. All right. Boom. So now we can get the value count to see how many items exist in this values array. All right. Value count is three. Okay. And then we can read the first value like this, put in zero. And there you go. Foo. The second item at index one. All right. Bar. Baz. And then, you know, if we do 99, it'll do a VM error. Okay. Okay, the last thing I want to look at is how do this 2D array works. So essentially, we can see array 2D. And here's how we access each item in there. So it's like we basically put in two arguments. We put the index of the first array and then the index of the second array. So 0, 0 should be 1. All right. All right, then 0, 1 should be 2. All right. So likewise, I can put like one, which would be the second array in here, and then at position one should be five. All right, so one, one should be five. All right, and then one, two should be six. All right, there you go. That's how you access 2D arrays. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna clear this out, and now we're gonna talk about mappings. All right, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and end the video there for today. I know at the beginning I initially said that we we're gonna cover mappings in this lesson as well, but I'm actually gonna save that for the next video, okay? So go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to catch that next video when it comes out, all right? Yeah, click the like button down below. That really helps these videos get found so that more people can you know, learn this stuff. And then finally, you know, if you want to learn blockchain step-by-step -step and become a true blockchain master, uh, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, I've got a training that's going to show you how to do exactly that. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.